Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and welcome back. This is part two of my comparison of old and new paradigm schools of medical thought. If you haven't already watched part one, I recommend you view that first. Part two will make more sense in that context. When I say old paradigm, I'm referring to mainstream conventional medicine. New paradigm is a reference to a wide spectrum of alternative holistic therapies. Although each is unique, they do have much in common in terms of their philosophical orientations and their practical approaches to illness. With that said, let's jump right in. Old paradigm thought has evolved in such a way as to produce a remarkably fragmented medical system, one that encourages some distinctly short-sighted tendencies. Thus, we have an ever-growing array of specialties and subspecialties which in and of themselves are sometimes quite valuable. The problem is that each specialty limits its scope to certain aspects of the human body. Each tends to function in its own little world, oftentimes with little awareness of other specialties and the bigger picture. Rarely is medicine ever cognizant of the patient as a whole. That would require a holistically oriented generalist, and that is a very rare breed indeed. Imagine, for example, what happens when an orthopedic doctor prescribes a drug that effectively suppresses the inflammation in an arthritic shoulder, but the patient subsequently experiences sleeplessness and begins to feel jittery and anxious. In such cases, a psychiatrist might be called upon to prescribe something for the anxiety and insomnia. The two physicians keep within the professionally defined bounds of their specialties, Neither has the requisite knowledge to recognize the mind-body shift that has taken place, and even if it was recognized, neither has the inclination to step on toes by wading into the other's professional domain. Not coincidentally, this fragmented system also serves to protect everybody from liability. If something goes wrong, it allows physicians to claim that they acted in accordance with the standards of their specialties, and they can argue that the problem lies outside the scope of their practice. The fragmentation of medical science is so ubiquitous that no one gives it a second thought. It's reached such an extreme that the very idea of holism tends to be met with derision, as if it is a quaint and naive concept. While new paradigm thought recognizes the value of various medical specialties, it always remains cognizant of the bigger picture. Without a broader perspective, it's just not possible to discern the relationships between medical events that span the various aspects of body, mind, and spirit. New paradigm thought is the antidote to the fragmented worldview engendered by conventional medicine which does not account for human consciousness or subjective experience. This denial of various aspects of the greater whole constitutes a type of bias. As such, it is scientifically incomplete and therefore incapable of connecting the dots. New paradigm thought is holistic and in this sense is always looking to connect the dots. Holistic awareness prevents patients from falling through the cracks into the no man's land between conventional medical events and specialties. In an ideal world, old and new medical paradigms would work together. While one tends to the local details of a given medical problem, the other could keep an eye on the bigger picture. Another feature that distinguishes old paradigm medicine is that it makes broad generalizations about patients and their illnesses. This is a throwback to the time of the Industrial Revolution, the same era from which capitalist medicine sprang. Back then, great emphasis was placed on efficiency, productivity, and uniformity. In time, those same values became integral aspects of modern medicine. The desire for assembly line homogeneity now plays itself out in many ways, but especially in terms of medical diagnosis and treatment. Diagnostic labels serve to organize patients into neat categories, which in turn are supposed to make therapeutic decisions easier. Conventional medicine focuses on the things that patients have in common. In essence, it values efficiency more than individual attention. 
This is the basis of what I call one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter medicine, and it's also the source of a great deal of medical dysfunction. New paradigm medicine recognizes the folly in trying to make too many generalizations regarding patient care. It acknowledges the commonalities among groups of patients with similar diagnoses, but it also values the things that make each case different. The great holistic truth is that regardless of diagnosis, all cases are unique, hence the need to individualize treatment for each and every person. I guarantee that if we take three patients with the same diagnosis, they will give different descriptions of their symptoms and they will tell completely different stories about how their problems came about. Upon scrutiny, their illnesses will have some similarities, but only in the broadest sense. Let's take, for example, three cases of bronchitis. All three complain of a cough that can be localized to the bronchi. Beyond that, there are a few similarities. One patient says his cough is dry and he coughs much more when he tries to walk around. He rarely coughs at night when he lies down to sleep. He's convinced that his illness was triggered by the stress of a personal financial setback. A second patient says that his cough is wet and productive. It gets worse when he tries to lie down, so it forces him to sleep sitting up. He believes that his bronchitis was triggered when his daughter was hospitalized with appendicitis. A third patient describes intense attacks of spasmodic coughing that produce large amounts of thick mucus. The only thing that quiets his cough is a cold drink, which he carries with him at all times. He's unable to identify anything that may have triggered his illness. Now, all three carry a diagnosis of bronchitis, and all three are prescribed the same exact antibiotic. In such cases, it's not hard to see why cookie-cutter treatment would produce a wide range of hit-or-miss results. New paradigm medicine questions right from the start whether a one-size-fits-all diagnosis of bronchitis can be used as a reliable guide for treatment. It understands the need for individualized care, and that requires a willingness to look beyond surface impressions into the deeper aspects of each patient's personal experience of illness. Another characteristic of old paradigm medicine is its narrow focus on short-term results. This makes perfect sense given its reductionist viewpoint and its lack of theoretical framework that would allow it to connect the dots between one medical event and the next. Medicine's fragmented approach to human health is akin to a form of psychological dissociation. This general aversion to a longer-term perspective often shields it from the reality of how its therapeutic choices tend to contribute to the development of chronic disease. Society as a whole also fails to connect the dots because it too has been indoctrinated from birth into the ways of our scientific culture. New paradigm thought questions the value of any therapy that produces short-term relief at the expense of longer-term overall health. In some cases, short-term relief may be the only available option. However, most of the time, it can be avoided. The only way to keep track of long-term outcomes is to broaden one's perspective, to understand the relationships between psyche and soma, to always keep sight of the bigger picture, and to connect the dots, especially when the medical community is reluctant to do so. Another defining feature of old paradigm medicine is its paternalistic attitude toward patient care. The expectation that the general public should submit to medical authority has only grown stronger with time. This is partly due to medicine's increasing power and influence. It is also due to the fact that the medical monopoly is ever vigilant to maintain its grip on the reins of power. After all, compliance is the buzzword, and the definition of compliance is to obediently do what one has been asked or ordered to do. A related issue is the hierarchical nature and structure of medical institutions. 
There are chains of command that must be followed by all in the war against disease. In recent times, the war against germs has convinced the medical establishment that it has the right to take even stronger measures. Its most recent actions have far surpassed mere paternalism. They have spilled over into overt authoritarianism. By comparison, new paradigm medicine proposes a more cooperative approach to patient care. The ideal is one of a thoroughly informed mutual agreement between patient and practitioner. I do not claim that this is a uniformly established norm among holistic practitioners, but I am suggesting that it reflects the true values of new paradigm thought. The bottom line is that patients must always retain the rights to be informed, to be consulted, and to choose to decline medical care at any moment in time. Even if a proposed treatment carries with it a 100% guarantee of success, which is in reality literally never true, and even if it means the difference between life and death, the patient still has the right to say, no, thank you. No government, medical institution, or practitioner has the right to coerce or to compel any patient to receive treatment against his or her wishes. In addition, if a person refuses care, that does not by any means disqualify that person from seeking and receiving future care. It is immoral to withhold treatment as a means by which to punish a patient for past decisions. Everyone has a right to change his or her mind. In terms of strengths and weaknesses, both schools of thought have their advantages and disadvantages. Two of the main strengths of old paradigm medicine are emergency care and diagnostic technologies. Conventional medicine has the technical expertise to deal with broken bones, allergic reactions, gunshot wounds, and all sorts of medical extremes. It has also developed a wide array of very powerful and useful diagnostic technologies. And perhaps one of its greatest innovations is insulin, which has allowed millions of people to enjoy normal lives. The old paradigm's most glaring weakness is its short-sighted approach to chronic illness. The best it can do is to manage illnesses like arthritis, hypertension, asthma, allergies, and so on. There is no conventional medical cure for chronic disease. Drug therapy serves only to control those diseases. Countless millions are fated to take prescription drugs for the rest of their lives in order to maintain the status quo of their chronic illnesses. As previously noted, this is mainly due to the old paradigm's lack of perspective. It focuses on the short term, but is unable to connect the dots in order to understand how its suppressive approach actually contributes to the development of chronic disease. Another previously noted weakness of conventional medicine is its one-size-fits-all approach to both diagnosis and treatment. The treatment of human health is a highly complex art and science. It is both unrealistic and unscientific to expect that all patients will respond favorably to treatments that are formulated by making broad generalizations about patient populations as a whole. New paradigm medicine recognizes the value of diagnostic technologies and emergency medical care. So it sees no need to reinvent the wheel. It actually does have much to offer that could supplement and improve upon emergency care, but mainstream medicine has not been open-minded enough to consider those possibilities. The biggest strength of new paradigm medicine is its ability to both reverse and sometimes cure chronic illness. My own holistic medical practice of 30 years has shown me that time and again. New paradigm medicine's perspective enables it to understand that human health is not static. It is a process that has directionality. It can move in either a positive or negative direction over the course of time. The negative direction leads to the development of chronic illness. 
The positive direction is the direction of healing. Drugs designed to suppress symptoms in both acute and chronic illnesses, although occasionally necessary, do not encourage one's health to move in a positive direction, and they are not conducive to positive long-term health outcomes. There are many non-toxic alternatives to pharmaceuticals that encourage genuine healing. Such treatments are not suppressive and do not, therefore, tend to make matters worse in the long run. There is also a great deal to be said about the fact that most new paradigm treatments are natural. They're natural in the sense that they're not synthetic chemical compounds that contribute to the overall degradation of the ego ecosystem. And human health is critically dependent upon a healthy environment. Although this is hardly an exhaustive list of the differences between the two schools of thought, it does cover some of the more important distinctions. And now I'd like to leave you with some final thoughts to consider. American healthcare has been in crisis for quite some time, and there are two main reasons for this. First, the parasitic nature of for-profit medicine cannot be denied. Diagnostic and surgical technologies expensive pharmaceuticals and biotech engineering are lauded and promoted precisely because they are so incredibly profitable. And that comes at an extremely high cost to the average citizen. In the final analysis, quality health care that values the well-being of patients, it's just not compatible with a system that prioritizes corporate interests above all else. Secondly, as long as this remains the case, there will be no incentive to change. While new paradigm medicine may be good for patients, it's not good for the corporate bottom line. For-profit medicine has no reason to consider new ideas, to think outside the box, or to do what's best for patients, as long as it's blinded by its own greed. It's gotten so bad that most people don't recognize that the American media is awash and pharmaceutical company propaganda designed to keep them in the dark about safer medical alternatives. Our healthcare crisis is a function of exorbitantly high costs for medical care that actually encourages the development of chronic disease. Those invested in preserving a system based on old paradigm thinking are the ones most likely, likely to sling mud at alternative approaches which it often disparages as pseudoscience. In reality, pseudoscience is nothing more than derogatory slang used to ostracize medical theories and practices that don't conform to old paradigm standards. In fact, new paradigm science is just as scientific as old paradigm science. The difference is that it replaces some outdated assumptions about the nature of illness with new ideas that take into account the whole person and long-term well-being. Even though the two paradigms are very different, if they could ever figure out how to work together, they could complement each other rather nicely. Of course, that's a very big if. Old paradigm medicine would have to acknowledge that its pharmaceutical approach is fraught with dangers. New paradigm medicine will become a first line of defense, while old paradigm diagnostics would maintain its well-deserved status as state-of-the-art. Old paradigm treatments would come into play only when safer, more natural therapies fail to bring relief. Emergency medical care would remain much the same, although it could be made safer and more effective with the addition of some new paradigm innovations. By working together, they could revolutionize health and healing. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this presentation, please visit the ATH YouTube channel where you can find many more similarly informative videos. Mm -hmm.